I wrote this because too many people do. Please don't call him Boris. He is not your friend. Johnson is the proper term. It's US for bell end. The same applies to Donald, his orange counterpart. Call him Trump, the ghastly lump. It's British slang for fart. Cheers. Yo, I'm the MC of Ready Rebel Poetry, and I'm a history of my identity. I'm independent of Red Cottage Industry, DIY, from here to eternity. Let me tell you what's been going on. I take inspiration from centuries long gone. Oral tradition of sedition, that's my position. No court jester with a tame disposition. Poetic license, 39 years I've had one. They don't come easy, they're not handed out for fun. You have to earn it, work and sweat and move, not get stuck in a dead poet bore groove. I earn mine in dirty, scummy punk clubs, art centres, rock gigs, festivals and dodgy pubs. It is once or twice I've had to fight. But when a fascist it's a poet, the poet's doing something right. I love words and I love them in the red and raw. I like to use them in ways I've not been used before. I want you to laugh, I want you to think as well. Bollocks to TV, this is live. As live as hell. Oral tradition. The real origins of poetry. Matilda the stockbroker. Ranting rebel MC. Dean of the Social Surrealist University. Welcome to my wild poetic journey. Cheers. Yeah. I've had a fucking lurgy. Sorry, sorry, didn't say that. Um, I've had a lurgy for weeks. This is for the Northwest. You tell me how you've suffered since the closure. I see the pain and sadness in your eyes. I feel your anger at our country's leaders who offer only platitudes and lies. The gigs I hear so many of these stories, all different, but the message is the same. You're sick to death of scheming politicians, no longer gonna play their poxy game. The referendum was your chance, you took it. They told you we'd be taking back control. Control of jobs and factories and borders. A revolution wrapped up in a poll. The EU is a massive corporate bully. Cheap labour and big profits at its core. I understand why you voted for Brexit. One chance to strike a blow in the class war. But it wasn't the EU who shut your pit down and sent met thugs rampaging through your streets. It didn't close your hospitals and workshops. Smash down your union to brave defeat. No EU diktat caused the housing crisis, the poll tax, bedroom tax, nor zero hours. No, all of these were brought in by the Tories. Far worse to give these bastards brand new powers. Control of pub and school and workplace and counter all the endless media lies. Take back control as we all stand together. No scapegoating and no divide and rule. The future is unwritten. And it's daunting. Please don't let Brexit take you for a fool. Thank you. If you're not on my Attila the Stockbroker Facebook page, please come and spread that to anyone you know who needs it. And as we all know, there are many. Now, from my personal perspective, my life, my career, my, what you want to call it, my activities as a poet musician will be severely curtailed if there is a no-deal Brexit. And I remember what it was like before 1992 when you were a punk rocker and you were touring around Europe. And this is from bitter experience not wanting it to come back. This is called Rock and Roll Brexit. I wrote it on the ferry home in October 2016, uh, just after the election result, obviously. I, I disappeared. My bandmates thought, where are you gone? I came back and said, I've just written this poem. I've just toured my band Barnstormer from Dunkirk to Lucerne and back through France. Belgium, Germany and Switzerland without showing a passport once. Yes, non-EU Switzerland too. A little bridge, an empty hut. In my punk rock youth, I remember how musicians had to carry carnets for our instruments when we crossed the channel. Everything down to the last spare string, painstakingly listed on a pointless green form, checked and stamped at every border after standing with the truckers in endless queues. I remember the invasive French customs whose cretinously predictable searches for non-existent drugs took the edge off many an otherwise enjoyable tour. Search the big, posh cars driven by the suits! I'd always say, after these unimaginative custodians had finished their fruitless checks, 
No one imports half a ton of heroin dressed like we are. Driving a scruffy transit van with clean me written in the dirt on one side. We hate Crystal Palace on the other. A large knob and testicles adorning the back and empty beer bottles rolling around on the floor. Are we going to have to go through all this again just because Rupert Murdoch was pissed off by the fact that no one in Brussels took a blind bit of notice of him? Lord, give me strength! Only joking, of course. Brexit was an informed decision taken by the British people after serious consideration of the established facts presented intelligently and objectively by the rigorous guardians of the Fourth Estate. And anyone who suggests anything else is patronising and supercilious. So if in a few years' time, a British number plate for band touring Europe becomes the equivalent of a plague signal on a door in medieval times, and I'm once again obliged to fill in ridiculous forms, and perhaps even at my advanced age stand naked in a room with a glove finger up my ass, as I once did in Calais in the 80s, I shall hold myself proudly to attention and celebrate the fact that I am British, and we have taken back control! Thank you. Trump Brexit bladder cancer. That's one of my books called Undaunted. A uh, very short one for Trump. Uh, the very early Trump, when he just grabbed hold of Theresa May's hand. And for about one tiny millisecond of a millisecond, I felt a little tiny fleeting twinge of sympathy for Theresa May, but it soon vanished, don't worry. But I did write this. Theresa the appeaser met the lady garden squeezer. Her brain was in the freezer. She treated him like Caesar. He's a really dodgy geezer. Tell Queen Liz if he sees her, grab his knob with a tweezer and revoke his sodding visa. Thank you. And we are in a divided country and I'm going to do this poem as an allegory for how to heal division or, or for a healing of division in the most personal way. A poem that I wrote for my stepfather with whom I did not get on. And I left home at the age of 17 as a result. And 37 years later I wrote this poem. Let it be an allegory for us all because we need to come back together. We are a civilised country and we're basically good people. All of us, or nearly all of us. There's a few who aren't, obviously. This is called Never Too Late. My father died when I was 10. And when she dried her tears, Mum met you in the choir. She'd known of you for years. I was so pleased when she told me that she would be your wife. And I look forward happily to a new man in my life. But you were the classical singer who thought rock and roll was junk. And I was the Bolan boogie boy who soon became a punk. You were the civil servant for whom everything had its place. And I was the left-wing activist out there and in your face. Yes, you were the head of the household. And I was the stroppy kid. We wound each other up for sure. We flipped each other's lid, but later we both learned so much and something new began. And here's a poem I wrote for you, you decent, gentle man. So I went off to my own life, left you and mum to yours. A few words about football, then the sound of closing doors. But the passing of so many years gave us both time to reflect. And slowly, oh so slowly, we forged a new respect. When you were ill the first time and found it hard to walk, I'd take you to the hospital and we would sit and talk. It felt so right and normal and it was such a shame that it had taken all this time, both stubborn, both to blame. Because you were the head of the household and I was the stroppy kid. We wound each other up for sure. We flipped each other's lid. But later, we both learned so much and something new began. And here's a poem I wrote for you, you decent, gentle man. When mum came down with Alzheimer's, five years you cooked and cared. And we were around there every day, so many thoughts were shared. Your simple, honest loyalty. The vows you'd made, you'd keep. No longer the big boss man, me. No longer the black sheep. Then came that day in hospital. The end was near, we knew. You told me, I do love you, John. I said, I love you too. You took my hand and squeezed it. Our eyes were filled with tears. The first time that we'd said that, it took 37 
years. Because you were the head of the household and I was the stroppy kid. We wound each other up for sure. We flipped each other's lid. But later, we both learned so much and something new began. And here's a poem I wrote for you, you decent gentleman. It's never too late. Never too late. Never too late to say you love someone. And if it wasn't too late for me and John, then it's never too late for anyone. Thanks. Right, those of you who saw me last year with my band 1640, Bartholm 1649, will be aware that I have a slight problem reproducing <coughs> the songs <coughs> on my own, <coughs> as well as the lurgy. <coughs> I only have two arms and two hands, and I play an awful lot of instruments. Um, now, I'm about to do this song for you, which was written for you. It's the follow-up to, to Leon Russelson's wonderful song, The World Turned Upside Down, which we sung earlier in, in chorus over there. Um, it, the follow-up being basically um, a song uh, about the other diggers in the other parts of the country, because as has been well documented, um, the diggers community in, in St George's Hill was not the only one. Uh, there were actually 34 all around the country. Um, and um, as is also well documented, obviously here and celebrated in this festival, um, Gerard Wynne Stanley came originally from Wigan. One of the major um, communities elsewhere uh, is, was, and uh, is celebrated in Wellingborough. And I did this song at the Wellingborough Diggers Festival a few weeks ago. And, uh, and now I play it for you here. And because I can't actually play two instruments at once, I'm going to do the introduction on the bass recorder and then play the song. My band, for those of you who don't know, we combine early music and punk in the same kind of way that the, that the Pogues combine Irish music and punk. I've always loved early music. I'm going to do two songs from the, three songs from the album for you now. This is called Wellingborough and Wigan, introduced on the bass recorder. Just the intro. Um, I was going to try and get Darren Poiser to play it, but it all got a bit too short notice. The king had been beheaded, the world turned upside down. With Stanley, the diggers cried, the poor should wear the crown. They made their stand in Surrey upon St George's Hill. But when Stanley was big and born, folk there will tell you still. The poverty around him burned deep into his soul. He grew up watching local folk dig common land for coal. That's where he got his digging from, his modern comrades say. And there's a diggers festival in Wigan to this day. It wasn't just in Surrey they were digging. The song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. It wasn't just in Surrey they were digging. The song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. I was asked to sing Wigan, because maybe that's how you pronounce it up here. It rhymes better and all. Now, if you want to join in with the recorded bit, you can. The imaginary recorded bit, obviously. The Wellingborough diggers were inspired to have a go. They said all things in common, but not common land in so. The field there was called bear shank, but it soon was bearing fruit. To thugs hard by the rich arrived to trample and uproot. The diggers' manifesto came from teachings of the church. The priest just served the property and left them in the lurch. Although it was so long ago, their statement still rings true. And there's a diggers festival in Wellingborough too. It wasn't just in Surrey they were digging. The song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. It wasn't just in Surrey they were digging. The song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. <laughs> Da 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 da
Across the south of Midlands, on bits of common land. 34 communities in total to stand. And made the appeals to Cromwell, but all fell on their fears. Then cries for justice drowned out by the cruel and owner's cheers. They echo down the centuries as we campaign today. Against the men of property who hold us in their sway. So many empty houses, so many folk in need. Extremes of wealth and poverty, and profiteers and greed. It wasn't just in Surrey, they were digging. This song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. It wasn't just in Surrey, they were digging. This song goes out to Wellingborough and Wigan. Cheers! <laughs> it means a huge amount to me to play that song here at this festival. And next year I'm reliably informed I will be back with my band Bumps on the Hilma 6049 for the 10th anniversary, which is also my 40th anniversary as a chill of the stock market. But now, diggers, I bring you fraternal, more or less, greetings from the most radical sect of all of 1649. Abba, he's a cop and the ranters. In 1980, when we started off as ranting poets, myself, the late great Seething Wells, little brother Jules Denby, Ben Zephaniah, many based nearby, not that far away from here in Bradford, we got ourselves the ranters after the ranters of 1649. So I don't need to explain too much here. You had the, the New Model Army, you defeated Charles I. Then out of that grew, grew the, the Levellers movement. From the Levellers came the Diggers, um, who, who, that we've, we're here to celebrate. And the most radical sect of all at the time were the Ranters. They believed, or Abbey Isacop, their leader, believed that God was dead, uh, the church was your local pub, and you could drink as much as you wanted and shag anyone you liked. And I have to say, apart from the, the last bit, because I'm thoroughly monogamous, I have totally, I have a total identification with Abbe Isacop, and I've written a song uh, celebrating him, his life, his work, um, and I have a t-shirt uh, in which Abbe Isacop is attired in the spirit of how he was attired often, so history informs us, at, um, at the, uh, the, the dances and various uh, celebrations of the ranters. Uh, he didn't get on too well with Gerard Wood Stanley. He was eventually thrown out by Gerard Wood Stanley. He was disowned, as it says in the song. Now, again, in this song, in, with the band, um, an instrument which was very much part of the scene in 1649 is featured. The crumb horn. Now, it is impossible, once again, for me to play the crumb horn and the mandola at the same time. So I'm going to give you the, um, the basic melody, um, which, which happens in this song. Uh, and then um, and then play the song and imitate the sound of the crumb horn uh, in the bits where the crumb horn comes in. But you're welcome to imitate a crumb horn along if you feel like it. Uh, it's not difficult. Uh, you'll hear what it sounds like in a minute. trying to be your own orchestra, you see, it's not good. Now I have been a ranter for nearly 40 years. I've done over 3,000 gigs and drunk a lot of beers. Sometimes I have ranted and then partied till I drop. But I am a total lightweight next to Abbey's a cop. Abiza was a ranter back in 1649 When he and Charles had lost his head he drank his weight in wine He shouted top is bottom and bottom shall be top Then he got his knob out Abiza called It's on the t-shirt The Puritans were in control when he shut them his arse he drank and smoked and stood up for the poorest of his class Proclaiming God's inside you and all the rest is plop You 
your church is your local pub, said Abba, he's a cop. They plowed in the mud. He found the perfect martyrs would be avenged in blood. Made rude songs out of psalms and bawled them out non stop. They danced around naked with his friends, and he's a cop. To all the godly Puritans, he was a ghastly sore. Polygamy and orgies and blasphemy and more. But even by our standards, he was way over the top. But he got quite a following. I mean, he's a cop. When Stanley and the diggers disowned him one by one. Go away, I mean, he's a He and his bold ranking crew continued to have fun. Fairfax sent the troopers round to finally put a stop. And it's a Newgate prison tumble, and he's a cop. And again. So sure. But one thing is for certain, he ranted no more. And for the next few centuries, historians gave the shock to the bold tale of the ranters and Abbey's a cop. Then came the 1980s and our punk rock poet crew. We called ourselves the ranters and we raised the ballyhoo. But though we were loud and beery and all over the shop We were sober and polite compared to Amaze Cop Amaze Cop, the Roaring Ranter of 1649 Cheers <laughs> Can we have a toast to Amaze? I'm sure you'd have loved it here I've got to suggest that the beer menu is brilliant. 16, 1649 Regicider. Love it. Absolutely love it. How about next year? Um, a nice dark fruity ale. Abbey's a cup. Rude and fruity. With added cheese. Or well, maybe not. Prince Harry's knob. You want to hear Prince Harry's knob? Well, I suppose it'd be rude not to. It is rude, but it'd be rude not to since I've been asked to do it. Um, this isn't a, a medieval song or a renaissance song, it's not from the album. Needless to say, those stars too were from the album, it's called Restoration Tragedy, which is on sale over there, along with the Abbey Easy Cop with his Nobat t-shirt, Barnstormer t-shirts, books of my poetry and my autobiography, just around the corner in the World Trade Centre. Um, so, the Ragged Trousers for Lounge, who's read, it is, it is a good one, I always do this when I ask, them. I always ask this when I do this song. Who here has read The Ragged Trousers for Lounge by Robert Trezel? My favourite book ever. Well, lots of you are oh, brilliant, and I thought you would have done. But of course, the Monday Ragged Trails of Lampis reads The Sun. And in 2008, when the banks were destroying the economy, uh, The Sun, obviously, well, the, the, the paymasters, uh, Murdoch and company, uh, needed to find some way of persuading ordinary people that actually the bankers were not the actual enemy. It was immigrants and social security scroungers and whatever else who'd actually destroyed the economy. And the bankers were completely blameless and doing a good job. So what they decided to do, and they said at the time, I can remember it, they said they got a picture of Prince Harry with no clothes on and they might be going to print it on the front page of The Sun. So this is written from the perspective of somebody who thinks the bankers are doing a really good job, the banking crisis was caused by immigrants and really, really, really wants to see a picture of Prince Harry with no clothes on. And it has a chorus uh, and if you like folk music, I'm sure you'll join in. Give Hester and Diamond their bonus. They deserve it, they do a good job. I want workhouses for the dull scroungers and a picture of Prince Harry's knob. 
I work for my gather for nothing. I'm grateful he gives me a job. I'd swap all your bloody trade unions for a picture of Prince Harry's dog. Here we go. He's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's dog. He's not, he's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's dog. The country, it just can't afford it. Those strikers, they're all rent to mob. They should all off their caps and be happy with a picture of Prince Harry's dog. Don't give me your bleeding heart lecture, you middle class guardian snob. Cause some of us live in the real world with a picture of Prince Harry's knob. He's knob, he's knob, a picture of Prince Harry's knob. He's knob, he's knob, a picture of Prince Harry's knob. That's very good. Well done, with you. I'm funny, bruv, on Birmingham on Thursday, I had a grubby chorus. Can even hear the accent when I summon knob. You lefties and loonies and liberals, it's time you shut your bloody gob. Cause all that the likes of me ask for is a picture of Prince Harry's knob. I'm penniless, hapless and hopeless, and the state of my health makes me sob. But I'll work like a slave for my betters with my picture of Prince Harry's knob. He's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's knob. He's not, he's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's knob. One more time. He's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's knob. He's not, he's not, he's not a picture of Prince Harry's knob. Yes, I'll read the sun and I'll believe it with my picture of Prince Harry's knob. Cheers. Oh, I ought to do this one as well. This is from the album. Uh, it's a Renaissance tune with a modern... Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, so I can't, no, that's a, uh, the heck was too far away, I can't hear, um, uh, that's right, um, this is about a bloke with a beard and the initials JC, uh, and, uh, it's, uh, about the dangers of personality cults. And I'm a bit out of tune, but I'm an old punk rocker, so I don't care. first appeared, the man they called JC. The scribes and Pharisees, they all sneered at the man they called JC. Like Lilburn he, a vision saw of a land where none were working poor. And he vowed to make that vision law, the man they called JC. The poor and the sick and the old, the man they call JC. And people are worth much more than gold to the man they call JC. He stands up tall and he speaks the truth and he mobilised the nation's youth. Got 40% in the polling booth, did the man they call JC. But it's not one man, it's ideas that count with the man they call JC. And we don't need a sermon on the mount from the man they call JC. He's got momentum, that's for sure, like the new model army in days of yore. And we'll take from the rich and we'll give to the poor with the man they call JC. Build a personality cult where the man they call JC Or another religion could be the result With a man they call JC He's not the messiah or a naughty boy But a man Murdoch wants to destroy That's how we know he's the real McCoy The man they call JC You. Okay, so so back so there's uh, there, there's um, there's there's Roger Daltrey, the singer of the Who, who famously once said he hoped he died before he got old. 
we got old and he's asked about Brexit and he says you use a mafia we toured before before 1992 and we'll tour again now it's all right for you mate with your great big nightliner buses and your army of bureaucrats to do with your carne and your other army of bureaucrats to do with all the VAT and all the other naughty words that I won't actually say because I'm trying to remember not to say them um, but I did decide to write this poem for uh, for Mr Daltrey um, and it, it goes like this talking about my generation who my generation talking about my generation who Talking about my generation, who? My generation, talking about my generation, who? I'm ashamed of my generation. It's not a generalisation. There are loads I think that just like me, but I'm seething with frustration. I'm ashamed of my generation. Once crusty, now crustacean. Then hippie punk, now spouting junk in a strange, divided nation. For years, the right wing press been spamming down our throats, their bigotry ramming. Murdoch and Dacre been programming. Heads full of brain dead nonsense cramming. No desire to cross examine. State of intellectual famine. You call me snowflake, I call you gammon. Hang on a minute, I think I'm a gammon. Who, if I'm pink, I'd rather be a salmon. But if I'm a gammon, I'm a left wing gammon. DIY, no love for mammon. I'm ashamed of my generation, obsessed with immigration. So many young folk think we're a joke with the brains of a dead Alsatian. I'm ashamed of my generation. It's such a transformation from the summer of love to shove the dove, give forage a donation. Horizons shrinking as they get older, hearts and minds going harder and colder, hippie gardens left to moulder, poor and sick get the cold shoulder, slowly losing love for humanity, I'm all right, Jack's selfish inanity, some in church and Christianity, Jesus Christ would call it insanity, <coughs> but we know we're not all like that, call your mates when they spout tap, and your brother when he spouts tap, 60 and and your sister when she's past that. 60 doesn't mean right wing prat. 70 doesn't mean sad old bat. 80 bring out the welcome mat. 90 wear a big nipple hat. I'm reclaiming our generation with great determination for unity, community, respect and integration. Thank you. I've got a... Sorry? Oh, no, 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 the clue's in the name, Royal Borough. We serve Knightsbridge, not Latimer Road. We're here for our quality voters, with a moneyed and tasteful postcode. We tolerate you since we have to, and we hope that you'll soon move elsewhere. Until then, we'll do our legal duty. If you cause any problems, beware. Your flats are all crumbling eyesores. Your neighbours are your social betters. They paid millions to live in this area. Some are next door to scroungers and debtors. So it's time to refurbish your building. Not with fire doors, sprinklers and care, but with cladding to make it look nicer so the rich can pretend you're not there. It's unsafe, you complain. That's just rubbish. We've been running it this way for years. Just be grateful you're housed in this borough and make sure that you're not in arrears. You've new skins on your homes, they look lovely. Regulations and standards are met, all done legally and within budget. So get on with your lives and don't fret. Those new skins cause the ghastly inferno. But that council is still in control. Though some should be charged with manslaughter and the rest all relieved of their role. As the people cry, justice for Grenfell. In the name of those folk left alone, in a world where appearances mattered more than flesh, skin, hair, muscle and bone. Thank you. I think Johnson should be left dangling in the cold for quite a while till he's all tiny and wrinkled and has no chance of an election. Anyway, uh, a couple more, I've got to do two more, thank you very much for coming soon, we can do this one, um, for football fans everywhere, I wrote this for the 96, CEOs, I wrote this for the 96, um, and um, I wrote it um, just before we got promoted, like some of you know, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, bottom of the fourth division, and actually gaining promotion to Premier League against Wigan, uh, two seasons ago, unbelievable story. I was part of the battle to save the club. I'm very proud of where we are, although I don't really like modern football and what happened to Berry is absolutely disgusting. I was in, I play, if anyone wants to come and see, if wants a double blow, it's a much longer set. I'm playing Preston tomorrow afternoon, Preston at the, um, at the New Continental tomorrow, 2 2.30. 2 
and was it 10 years ago I watched Bolton v Berry to show solidarity um, before that but of course Berry had been thrown out of the league although I think there are many grounds for them to be reinstated they what happened to them nearly happened to Brighton 22 years ago um, anyway so I, I put this poem is actually about more than football much more than football it's called the Leppings Lane in I wrote it for Sheffield Wednesday in the first leg of the playoffs the year we didn't go up the year before we did it looks so different now but I still recall how in this place there was horror and fear some people I know simply don't want to go are we there it's a strange atmosphere when I'm hills were bound the same thought comes around one that caused this short verse to be penned the best antidote to that old Shankly quote is to stand in the Leppings Lane end. We all have our dreams and our hopes for our teams and we sing till we die in our youth. Those folks sang, then they died. The police and press lied. It took 27 years till the truth. So if, as they may, once they beat us today, to this comforting thought I'll hold fast, we walk out of that ground and get home safe and sound for the 96 justice at last. Thanks. Thank you so much. Like I say, books and CDs, T-shirts, around the corner if you're interested when I finish. Uh, and uh, this is the last one. It's a wonderful festival. I, 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 we, loads of my friends playing and of course the headliners are a band who were personal friends of mine since 1984. One of my favourite bands in the history of the world. So of course I'm really looking forward to the mighty band they couldn't hang. Uh, this is the last one for me. Have a wonderful festival. Thank you. Give a big hand to everyone that organises this. I run a festival. I know how much effort goes into running something like this. Give them a great big hand. Well done. All you Wigan diggers. You're doing a brilliant job. Absolutely brilliant job. I nearly used the F word. I managed to remember not to. I'm doing well. I had one earlier on. Um, sorry about that. But uh, anyway, this is the last one for me. It's about being a 61 year old punk rock poet who's done this um, since 1980 so next year is my 40th anniversary and I'll be back here um, life still permitting uh, <coughs> with the uh, with my band uh, to uh, to celebrate 10 years of diggers and 40 years of attending the songwriter so this is called Spirit of the Age thanks for listening to me you've got to be young and black to rap right so I've no chance because I'm old punk rock and white you've got to be young and black to rap wrong anyone can rap or write a punk rock song so don't look at me with scorn or derision I don't accept boundaries of cultural division I'm MC Attila and I'm right in your face so listen up folks because I ain't going no place this rap's called Spirit of the Age all my life I'm going to be on stage millions of ideas passing around my head and I'll be rapping till the day I'm dead age 48 I wasn't today rancid rule Joe Strummer is my soulmate 49 I was doing just fine reeling in the right I'm a verbal fisherman 50 I was nifty so don't look at me like I'm sad or I'm shifty 51 I'd have had some fun if Brighton it's called Tenor Crystal Palace, called None. 52, I was talking to you, and I make more sense than Pink 182. 53, top of the tree, red rebel rhymes and rapid rebel poetry. 54, like I said before, show me a fascist, I'll show the floor. 55, still cutting it live, while boring arty poets took a nosedive. 56, I was high in the mix, this old punk rocker, and learned some new tricks. 57, still first 11, drinking real ale like it's manna from heaven. 58, I was fueling debate, giving it straight from the 51st state. 59, laying down the line, pulling out words, and watching them intertwine. 60, still demanding attention. I won't be joining my punk rock pension. As long as I'm alive, I'll be live on stage. Age of the spirit. Spirit of the age. Thanks for listening to me, everyone. Cheerio. See ya. Thanks very, very much. Once again, please, the inimitable Attila the Stop Roll Car. Fantastic. Cheers, John. Uh, he's got a lot of merch, and I know he don't want to take it all back to Brighton. So uh, have a look at what he's got, CDs and the new the album and uh, everything, books around there. Absolutely brilliant. Right, um, I've just got an announcement to make. Um, somebody's lost their credit and bank card. If it's you, we go over to the uh, Festival HQ and uh, give them your name and they've got it there. Uh, thanks everyone so far, it's been a fantastic afternoon. Please help us just keep the uh, site tidy using the bins and uh, all that. We are going to have a collection in a bit, so uh, in the meantime, enjoy the festival and I'm going to hand you back to the song and story stage. Godzilla!